In the year 2020, the world completely changed. We went from being able to celebrate publicly outside to now having to hide indoors behind masks and shields and Lord knows what else. Roads went from bustling and busy to desolate and empty where cops would sit and just watch people fly by because what's the point in pulling someone over if there's no one to harm? Records being broken for speed runs across the United States happening seemingly every week and the car community struggling right alongside everyone else. And as I sit here in my own self-quarantine after getting the disease yet again, how has COVID changed the car community? How has it changed the car markets? And at the end of it all, what is the final result of this endemic disease? Now, before we get started with this video, I do want to clarify a couple of things. Number one, I'm not sick with COVID anymore. I've recovered. I'm able to function. It knocked me out completely. It's my third time getting it, which is really frustrating, but it happens. Second, the glove is for carpal tunnel. I have reoccurring problems with it. It's not the end of the world. And third, people have been asking where our Gold 240 is at. And the answer is we had to stop for a little while because we still can't find the rat. And we actually ordered some more parts. Those will be addressed in an upcoming video. To kick off today's video, I do want to also mention that this is going to be a three part series because we're going to be talking about car industry. We're going to be talking about car culture, and then we're going to be talking about the buying and spending habits of people in the, the whole pandemic. Why three parts? Because there's just a lot to cover and I don't want to have a 45 minute long video. I'd rather be able to have it chunked out so people who are curious about one aspect of it can go check that out for themselves. So for today, we're going to talk about the community. And when it comes to the community, oh boy was covid quite the change up you see prior to covid in my local area the car community was quite extensive many cars came to many meets they all intermingled with each other and we went to a lot of events together as friends as families almost clubs and we knew everybody everybody knew what you had people were excited to see the little changes that you would make here and there as time progressed forward it was a very different world than what we live in now to be honest when the lockdown started people didn't actually take them too seriously the car community around me being mostly a rebellious bunch kept the meats going kept things alive we stuck together we hung out but as more and more people kept getting sick and time moved on with the police throwing us out of all of our favorite places, the meets just stopped happening as often or altogether shut down. People got too rowdy with no real presence of police to help control the situation. And everyone's favorite car meat killer, the swingers, the bangers, the people who decided to drift through all the parking spaces started showing up. In fact, my favorite local meat, the Chick-fil-A meat, got completely shut down because of people doing standing burnouts down the main stretch. And while that was a relatively normal thing before, they kept happening earlier and earlier until finally they were being done during the business hours of the business. And uh, Lowe's was not happy about that. Our meat ended up getting shut down with arrest warrants probably still active for a lot of the participants in the shenanigans that took place there. And that chaos seemed to spread to anywhere car culture was being celebrated, even to the earlier morning cars and coffees. But then finally, that second year of COVID hit. And instead of having these crazy ragers all the time, they became less and less frequent because, well, people's money started running out. As is, people were working from home or just straight up lost their job thanks to the pandemic and not being considered an essential employee. And as a result of that, they just couldn't afford the habit anymore. They couldn't afford the hobby. And as the stimulus checks rolled in and as time moved on and people started to not be so scared of the disease, but learn to live with it, some interesting things started happening. 
You see styles change every year. There's something that's new and happening in in. I still remember when having roof boxes on sports cars was still a very popular thing to do. But as the trends and things shifted, so did people's tastes in certain styles of modifications. Because you could very much tell people were spending way too much time on the internet and watching a lot, a lot of movies. That's right, around here, lots and lots of people had plenty of time to do body work. And a huge show car renaissance took place. Instead of half-built clunkers getting together in a parking lot now, now we've got cars that are built complete with beautiful paintwork, incredible amounts of detail, and excellent choices in wheels. It seemed like out of nowhere that these newfound changes were coming into this market, into this space around here. But the reality was is that it was always there. It's just now those types of builds, those types of cars, at least in my community, were allowed to take center stage. And the show circuit just exploded. Clean culture and guys like them. There was so much more representation for that style of build post the darkest parts of the pandemic. In fact, some people we know that have been on this channel, however briefly, made some incredibly gorgeous and beautiful cars during the pandemic. Sometimes it was with the help of those stimulus checks and sometimes it was just with our hard earned money. But with everything shifting as far as how we lived, what we spent our money on, what we needed to spend our money on, people started finding ways to tweak the budget better and utilize their extra free time to make some incredibly unique rides. And with that said, it is my opinion that COVID has done a couple of things for this local car community here. One is to create an amazing circuit of beautiful masterpieces. And on the other hand, we have more people doing more riffraffy type stuff like huge stoplight meets, swing in at events, and just all in all being ridiculous. The problem now is with so much attention on the car community, even from the people who aren't in the cars, it's starting to uh, gain the ire of our legal system. More and more municipalities are cracking down on car enthusiasm, whether it's the good form or the rowdy form. And as a result, it's become increasingly more and more difficult to be able to celebrate car culture as so many places now see car enthusiasts as nuisances and menaces to society instead of just average people with another hobby. And here's hoping that with videos from creators like myself, Gears and Gasoline, and many, many others, they'll be able to see that car culture isn't just full of idiots doing burnouts in the middle of intersections. It's got people with real lives, real stories, and real passions trying to do something, maybe even generational. And hopefully, with this new wave of car enthusiasts, car builders, and dreamers, these people will start to realize that car enthusiasts aren't destructive menaces. They're just like everybody else. We just choose to spend our money on metal instead of clothes and purses. We just choose to live fast, hopefully not die young, and pursue the ever-extended horizon. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode and this little hot take, if you will, of car culture now post-COVID-19. I know that we still are dealing with the disease and we still have stuff to deal with as far as pandemic recovery goes, I myself included, but I thought it was a nice little step back that I was able to look at everything and go, you know, things aren't what they used to be. If you find this kind of content interesting, please consider subscribing, check out our other content. We have plenty of cool builds on this channel like a Slam Forester with the EJ205 out of Japan. Now I've got an RB20 that we're going to be finishing up here soon. I've got my Evo, Ian's got his beams. There's some cool rides on this channel and if those sound interesting to you, consider subbing, check this out. And if you want to see a little bit more about that RB car we talked about in the beginning, check out this video right over here. This guy right here, this is where we're at last. And hopefully, if you're watching this on Friday, well, Ishmael and I should be in that car trying to make it start for the first time. <laughs>